Good day everyone, so in today's video we'll look at how to use the GCSIMP web application. This application purely runs in your browser and does not require you to download any additional software. So to get started you can visit gcsim.app, alternatively a quick Google search should also bring you to this landing page. Once you're at this page, you can just click on the Get Started button and you'll be brought to the screen, which gives you a team and action list section. So to start a simulation, you obviously need to have a team of characters at the minimum, obviously one character. You can use the drop down list to, let's say, pick a character like Nilo, but you'll notice that some of the default options might not be desirable. We would still need to add in artifacts and make some manual adjustments, which is really not that much fun. What we can alternatively do is use our own characters in the game and to add these characters is actually very, very simple. What you need to do is go into your Genshin Impact profile. You can go here into the edit profile section. You'll notice that I've already got a couple of characters in the character showcase section here. You can obviously add as many as you want and then just make sure that the show character details is active. So this lets the web application know which one of the characters you want to import. So basically any characters that are on these eight slots should be able to be imported into the application itself. Thereafter, you can just simply click on the copy UID button Go back here to GC Sim, and right here at the bottom where it says tools, you simply go to import from Enka, you paste in your UID, and lo and behold, you have already uploaded all of your characters. Sometimes you might have a character here that wasn't in the game, just give it a couple of seconds or a minute or two, and it will just then refresh automatically. Once everything has been refreshed, you can now simply look for your character by clicking on the drop down menu. You'll find the default needle and the one that you've imported. And you can now do the same for any of the other characters on your team. You'll see that I'm going to quickly load in the characters for a classic Nilo Bloom team. So that is going to be Nilo, Kokomi, Nahida and Kole. And here you go. You can see all of my characters have been manually loaded in. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to give all of them 100% or like 200% ER. So this is just to make sure that everything is going to run very, very smoothly. Of course, you're also welcome to adjust some of the stats you're liking. You might even say to yourself, hey, what happens if I give my Nahida an extra constellation? You can absolutely do so. So this is very good for testing out what, what happens if I use this weapon or should I go for this constellation just to get a sense for what it might actually mean for your account. Regardless, once you're done with the team setup phase here and you've edited all of the character details, you now then need to add in a couple of actions. So to add in actions actually requires you to read a bit of the documentation. Alternatively, you can just copy and paste what I have below if you're following along with me. If you're not planning on using a Nilo Bloom team, you can simply visit the Teams database. So you go here onto Genshin Sim and you just go to Teams database. You look for a team that is similar to yours. You click Open Viewer and you'll see in the config that someone most likely already put in a couple of samples options that you can just copy. I can honestly promise you that there is every single kind of team imaginable here so there you will never run out of examples to use. So once you are happy with that and you've copy pasted everything you should now be ready for a simulation. Let me just quickly explain what happens here. You've got the character section right here at the top it doesn't really matter what the order is. I just like prefer using my characters at the top and then all the other things at the bottom, but you can put these things in any order. But once you've defined your characters, you define where your enemies are. You define what options you're going to use for the simulations. You can see we're running 500 simulations. We've got in a bit of a delay every time you swap between characters of about 200 milliseconds. And then you've got some enemy options. You're welcome to change these options. You're welcome to add resistances, HP, positioning, all of these things can be found in the documentation tab. 
and most importantly what your team actually does so here in the bottom you can see i've set nahida as the active character in my party and i'm now going to start with her by using her skill and burst using kokomi nilo kole this is just classic nilo bloom stuff skill means elemental skill burst means elemental burst attack means normal attack and you can also string a couple of normal attacks by just adding a semicolon and the number of normal attacks you wish to add and that is basically how it works so you can see here we're running a loop if you're not familiar with loops don't worry about it but just make sure that you copy this um, syntax in essence what it means is repeat all of this five times per iteration so we're going to basically do five rotations per simulation and we have 500 simulations so this should give us a very good idea as to how this team will perform once you're happy you can click the blue simulation button and you should start seeing your team's damage being simulated over time as you can see here our simulation is running for about 100 seconds because we have five rotations playing roughly at about 20 seconds per rotation and this gives us a total damage per second of 137 against two separate targets as you can see here we also have the target information the target resistances can also be set it separately what you'll now find is that together with the main headline stat like damage or energy or reactions you also have a couple of smaller statistical stats here that are given basically you can see the minimum the maximum and some of the percentiles the numbers that you typically want to look at are p50 that's the median amount of damage that you've done and then the average amount which is here by damage per second if you find that your lowest points let's say your lowest dps or your minimums are very far from your maximums then this might indicate that you've got let's say some inefficiencies in your team like a burst that are not coming up or let's say some inefficient way in which you're playing the teams all of this you can try and remedy in the configuration and then see if some of this might not help regardless as you play around with this you also find that you can get different views of the same thing like your damage over time uh, who's doing like the most damage in your team typically in the beginning of a rotation um, you're still like setting up all of your abilities but later on you can clearly see the differences come out as the team almost gets into motion and just playing through that rotation over and over some of the other useful stats on the tension sim is stuff like your character's damage distribution basically it says in plain english that kokumi is doing the most damage and she's doing it through do um, hydro uh, through tendro applications and so on and your target dps distribution is 50 50 between the two targets because your targets are literally in front you can also move the targets to the back or have a couple of more multiple targets spread out this will then certainly affect this um, pie chart right here other interesting stats would include your character's dps and you can see here kokomi is doing the most damage by dendro and a bit of her hydro as well you can see here as well which character um, specifically is doing what type of damage so kole is contributing the least nahida is doing a bit with her e ability nilo surprisingly doing a bit of damage through the bountiful cause and then kokomi obviously doing the same as well you can also look here at the source of your team's damage since we're running a needle bloom team the majority of the damage is indeed coming from the bloom a bit is coming from nahida's e ability and then there are the rest as well as you move on you can also see exactly what the spread of actions are for your characters so you can see here kokomi basically when she's on the field she takes about 80 percent of her time to do attacks as uh, she uses her skill burst etc so you can certainly look at some of these and how long it takes for a character to be on the field and what types of actions they're performing this is also further corrobor corroborated with the field time distribution there are a couple of other interesting stats like who generates the most energy who generates the most reactions the target aura uptime all of these things have interesting implications and it's just a matter of getting used to these things and perhaps understanding where some of your team's uh, deficiencies are and how you might wish to um, improve on some of the aspects 
Once you're happy with the simulations, and this is basically the main part, you can also dig into a bit of detail as to what is happening. So let's take the median simulation or the median amount of damage. This corresponds to the number that you saw right here, 139k. And once we look at this and we've generated the sample configuration, we can see in detail after clicking on our settings exactly what is happening to the teams. So you can see here we start with Nahida's skill. We use her burst. She applies Dendro. We swap to Kokomi. She uses her um, jellyfish. The jellyfish applies Hydro to Dendro, etc., etc. You can, in essence, get a literal frame by frame or a second by second fra breakdown of when which skills were applied so for instance with kokomi you apply hydro to dendro but only later on does a dendro core spawn that is just typically how the game works it's not like you get them immediately there is always a bit of a delay and then once a dendro core has spawned there's going to be a bit of another like 0.5 second delay before you'll be able to hit the enemies with that dendro core damage so this is typically how the simulation works. Everything is locked very, very carefully. If you do find an error, you can just report it to the guys there on Discord. But otherwise, if you are happy with what you see, you can share your results with other people, or you can even just try and test out some other team ideas by visiting the Teams DB right here and seeing what other people have done. But that is, in a nutshell, how Genshin Simulation works. It's very easy to get into, and once you play enough around with it, you'll certainly have a feel for what you should be optimizing and how to progress from there. When in doubt, reach, read the documentation or 